Yo, welcome back to more Manson. It is your boy Manson, man. You guys told me to check out this video right here. Car Wow. Shout out to Car Wow. We got a VW Golf GTI 2021 review. Is the MK8 the best yet? You know what I'm saying? It's already looking good. You know what I'm saying? It's all white. You feel me? Got the nice shoes on. You know what I'm saying? We better go ahead and check this one out, man. Y'all new here. Smash that sub button, like the video. If you want me to check out more cars on the channel, man, let me know. I think y'all said the 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 R3, R8, R8 or R3. I don't know what y'all said. I'll check that one out, but let's check this one out first, man. Uh, let's get right into it. Hi, how are you? Matt Watson here from Carway, and I'm here with the new Volkswagen Golf GTI. Okay. In this video, I'm gonna talk you through all the changes over the normal Golf to the exterior design, the interior, and of Ooh, course- and I can't wait to see. I like the place. interior. I'm gonna take it for a drive, see if Ooh, it's any fun, and I'm gonna launch it to see how quick it really is from 0 to 60 miles an hour. Now, before we get into all of that, please make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to turn yes, notifications uh... on. That way, you will not miss a single upload. Buying a new car? Then head to CarWow. And my Golf GTI starts from just under 33 and a half. The price. pounds. But even though it's brand new, you can still save almost 2,000 pounds off on through CarWow. And you can still save on this car or any car. It's not a bad price. Just on the pop-out banner up there to get a car wash over a normal Golf with this GTI. Well, in terms of the exterior design, it does stand out because you get a more aggressive front bumper with this honeycomb effect here. You've also got the classic GTI red striping and it runs all the way across the front of the car and into the lights. Mm. Speaking of which, these lights, they're matrix LEDs, so they'll blank out part of their beam so they don't dazzle at oncoming drivers. Another oh, that's cool nice. Feature about this is that you actually have an LED strip there which also lights up. Thing is though, this car's face, it's almost like it's got a monobrow. It sort of reminds me of Bert from Sesame Street. <laughs> Here at the side, the GTI has 18 inch alloy wheels as standard, though you can upgrade to some 19s. You also get red brake calipers, some red GTI badging, and these side skirts, though they're just made out of cheap, rough black plastic, though it does actually contrast quite nicely with the white paintwork. It makes it look a bit meaner, as does the fact that it sits low to the ground than a standard golf. Here at the back, you get a roof spoiler. The back window is also spoiled out by 65%. And that, once again, works well with this white paint. You get LED tail lights, GTI badging, more aggressive, deeper rear bumper. I was just looking underneath. Looks very the aggressive. To see if it had a diffuser. And there seems to be this weird hole there. I'm not sure if it's meant to be there or if some bit of panelling has just dropped off. You can't see it from this angle anyway. What you can see though are the twin chrome exhaust pipes, which I really like the look of, and they're real. Thank God for that. In fact, I think this angle is the best angle of the new GTI. Really? really? Nice looking. What do you reckon? Let me know in the comments. Here on the inside. I like the interior. I think the that's my fa favorite the most part. Most obvious are the sports seats. Yeah, so I'm not a big fan of that, the, the, the pattern. The sports seats is nice. I just don't know if I like the pattern it's on the seat. Headrest. It's like a picnic basket, picnic, you know? Big side bolsters and the classic GTI tartan pattern. You've also got a sports steering wheel. It's nice to hold. You've got some red accents on it and the GTI. I know, I know it's comfy to drive. Really it looks like a very comfortable car to drive. Here on the interior trim and on the door. You've also got some aluminium pedals. The starter button glows red, trying to encourage you to start the engine. Then you've got some red accents there. Wow. LED lighting, just on the dash. And whenever you see the car on the infotainment screen, it is, of course, a GTI in the colour that you picked it. Also, you get digital dials as standard in this car, and you get GTI dials. Look, they're red. It's lovely. There's quite a lot of red going on, actually, in this car. Oh, stitch it in. Well, and obviously, if you have a manual gear selector, you'll get some red stick. Manual. Yeah, I don't know how to drive a manual. So if any of you guys want me to test drive this car, <laughs> I have no clue how to drive a manual. I've never driven a manual car. I've always been an automatic. I've, I know how to drive a motorcycle. If it's anything like driving a motorcycle and switching gears on a motorcycle, I know how to do that. But as far as a car, like, I'd be so thrown off. There's three pedals on the, on the you know what I'm saying, by my feet. Does it feel sufficiently sporty enough? I think just about, really. Not too over the top, very GTI. As for the rest of the interior, it's golf oh, business. Oh, this is automatic usual, or? So what? Fairly not Was it automatic? Sporting, it did look automatic. Easily what? laid out, but some annoying touch sensitive buttons rather than normal buttons. And the ones. Oh. Air conditioner kicked in quick. <laughs> looks like I was in stop start mode, and then when I put the climate on, it started the engine and went crazy. Back to the buttons on the steering wheel, which I absolutely hate. In fact, they are <laughs> <in this car. laughs> Excuse me, French, but they are. 
like they're touch sensitive, so you swipe. Oh, and it is. Them, and so you're never sure exactly what you're Which supposed is, to do. Yeah, I, I would hate that too. I, I guess, I guess. You also but I do not like that pattern, the bro. The GTI specific trim, which is nice. Another thing I've noticed is. What's this guy's name? It is not nice, Mark. Seatback pocket. You've also got two other ones here for your mobile phone. So. Oh, that's the nice. Phone in there, the mobile phone in there, so you can watch one with each eye. Oh no, it's exactly the same as a normal golf. So. It's fairly comfy and roomy back here, but if you want more details on the practicality and things like door bins and how easy it is to fit a child seat, and hey, you see, you put your kids back there, like use and what you can fit in the cars. My is you saw us a family, car, nice family car. To watch my full in-depth video review of the normal Golf. It's all the same, really. Because the Golf GTI is front-wheel drive and not all-wheel drive like the Golf R, you don't have a rear differential. I need the Golf R. I need an all-wheel so drive. The capacity is exactly the same as a normal Golf at 381 litres. Though, if you really want a huge boot on your hot hatch, you're going to need a Skoda Octavia VRS. And if you click on the pop-out banner up there, you can check out my review of that car. Skoda that Octavia. Things, Octavia. On most cars, the colour of the dials change depending on which driving mode you're in. But in this car, they're always red. Red has got to be sport. The background is red, so you think you're constantly in sports mode, even though you're not. Oh. The only way you can know which mode you're in is this little graphic down here, which just cycles through. Between oh, I thought the, the colours change. Oh, change the colour of this background. I know it's a GTI and it has to be red, but not everything has to be red. Facts. Come on. This car may have a sports exhaust, but due to European noise regulations, it sounds a bit nah. You see what I mean? Not I'll rev it. The soft limiter doesn't help. It's enough of that, it's boring. Yeah, You're much better I agree. have the driving mode button on the steering wheel rather than there. Because you have to look down to I'm gonna sound like a leaf blower. You have to look down because it's not a physical button and it's touch sensitive. You've got to make sure that you're actually pressing the right thing. I want to show you this as well, look. If I put some pressure on there, the whole panel just clicks and moves backwards. So uh -huh. that's the and build quality. These integrated headrests really block your view if you're in the back seats. God, it's dead annoying. In most sporty cars, you can turn off the stability control just by pressing a button, nice and quick, and if you're out on track and you suddenly want to have some fun on a corner. In this car, it's so convoluted. You have to go. Bro, is he saying all the bad, five annoying things? I was about to say, is he saying everything bad about the car? Because he's really trashing the car right now. That menu, swipe across, select brakes, go to the ESC system, Scroll down to off, confirm that you do want it off, and finally you're there. And I want to hear the good thing. Thankfully, this car five cool things. Here we go. To help make up for all this, here's five. You get upgraded sports brakes over the normal Golf. Also, the suspension is tuned as well, ever so slightly differently. So it's five percent stiffer at the front and fifteen percent stiffer at the back for improved handling. The GTI is cool. an electronically controlled limited slip differential as standard, and that can send up to 100% of the engine's power to either front wheel on demand, depending on which one has the most grip, to help drag you out of the corner. The new body panels and an almost flat underfloor means that this new Golf GTI is actually 0.3 of a CD more aerodynamic than the old car. That will mean something to you if you're an engineer, if you're not. Yeah. <laughs> the car features a new aluminium front subframe over the old Golf GTI. This makes the front end stiffer and the steering more responsive. Also, it helps save a bit of weight, three kilos, though this car still isn't particularly light. It comes in at 1,463 kilograms in total. The GTI is a two-litre four-cylinder turbocharged petrol engine with 245 horsepower and 370 newton meters of torque. Drives the front wheel, 245 wheels, horsepower. Manual gearbox or a seven-speed automatic with launch control. Volkswagen says this car can do 0 to 60 in just 6.3 seconds, but I'm going to see for myself. It is a bit damp out there, but I've got launch control, automatic gearbox. Let's do it. Oh, ready to launch. God, that was a dreadful start. <laughs> it, was, it was like your grandmother getting off the line. Well, there we go. Still did not 60 in 6.5 60 seconds. 6 seconds. <laughs> I'm going to give it another go. I blame the driver. Oh, second time lucky. Got on grip this time. Still really steady off the line. <laughs> Struggling for traction. Slightly better, 6.48 seconds. If this was dry, I'd be getting 
below 6.3 for sure because that just grandma's off the line. In fact, it's looking a little bit drier here. Right, here we go. Oh. It sound good though, I ain't gonna lie, it sound good from the inside. Squirrely steering wheel. I guess that's the problem with front wheel drive. If it's a bit damp, you're always gonna struggle a bit to put your power down. In fact, if you click on the pop out banner up there on the top right hand corner of the screen, you can see a hot hatch that does struggle to put its power down. It's got an awesome all wheel drive system. In fact, it's my favorite car of this year. Check out the video. Hot hatches are just about the launch, are they? They're about how they make you feel on a twisty road. So let's go to manual mode for the gearbox on this. GTI and hoon it about a bit. Seems a bit sharp than the last GTI. And it Seems fun. Grip onto the road. The drive. This is more fun than any other GTI I've driven. It looks it fun really to drive. Is. It's not playful on the throttle like a Hyundai i30N, but it's really composed and really quick. What it does lack though is that edge of precision and the feel from the steering wheel, the brake pedal, and the manual gearbox that you get from the Honda Civic Type R. The question is though, should you go for a manual gearbox? And I say no. The automatic suits this car's personality better. Yeah, because while it is I a need an automatic. Car, it's not the ultimate driver's hot hatch. There's plenty of others to choose from for that. And the manual gearbox on this Golf is just so-so anyway. Now let's find out what this car's like when you're not hooning it. When you're driving sensibly in town. I'm going to put it into comfort settings so it's lined up the steering, reduce the responsiveness of the throttle and because this has the adaptive dampers it's softened the suspension and now you really do notice a difference. It just feels like a normal car. It's very very good over bumps. You wouldn't know it was the sporty model. I'm impressed by that. Sometimes with other cars you don't feel much of a difference between sport and comfort. With this you do. Mm. One thing I like about the Golf GTI is that not only is the steering nice. responsive, it only takes two turns to go from lock to lock. So if you want to go around a mini roundabout such as that, you don't have to do too much wheel twirling. It just makes it easy to live with. If it wasn't for all the red everywhere, I'd have no idea it was the sports model. I really wouldn't. I'm not sure that's a good thing, no. One of the greatest things yeah. about the Golf GTI compared to other hot hatches is that it's absolutely brilliant for commuting. It just behaves pretty much like a normal car. Now it comes with travel assist as standard. So you've got clever cruise control, which uses a radar to keep you a safe distance. Motorway oh, driving. Complain about the car. Got that? Or should you just go wrong? The golf. All right, man. That VW Golf GTI 2021 review. You know, I really, really like the interior of this car. I think that's my favorite part about this car. I, I don't like the shape of, I'm just not a hatchback fan. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I'm not a fan of the back of it, the way the back looks. Like the front looks okay, but it's the interior for me. The interior and I feel like the way it drives. It seems like a smooth car to drive. So we'll check out the R3 or the R, whatever y'all said next. But I hope you guys do my reaction commentary to this week's video. Special like, subscribe, channel, man. Stay tuned for my next video.